town boy. Big city dream. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Doing great. Cool. So before we get into you guys' music, I just want to talk a little bit about your backgrounds. Where'd you guys come from? Where'd you grow up? And how'd you end up in a band? Uh, me and Jordan met uh, working at Coachella, actually, uh, selling churros and pretzels and water bottles. So we messed around, and he was playing guitar and started singing. Yeah. And he said, do you want to start a band? And I was just like, yeah. And then I looked up where he lived, and he was 0.1 miles away from my house. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I just... I don't even think I drove that day. I think I just wa ended up walking to his house. Yeah. So oh, that's made, made writing songs yeah, really that's easy. That's easy, man. And yeah. then before we get into talking about the actual music, I got to know, where's the name come from? Boom Boom Brady. Where'd you get Jordan, that? Jordan, I'll, let leave, him know. I'll do this. Uh, so I'm uh, actually originally from New Hampshire. And uh, New Hampshire, you know, is basically just one giant forest. And there's not a lot to do there. So when I was a freshman in high school, the seniors got pretty bored. And they decided to build some uh, pipe bombs. You know, that's what you do with your time. So uh, then they decided to blow up some porta bodies and a uh, mailbox. Almost got charged with terrorism because that's what happens when you build bombs and blow things up. Oh, and uh, one of the kids' names was uh, Brady. So the local newspaper actually uh, coined the whole group of friends, uh, or terrorists, however you want to call them, uh, Boom Boom Brady and the Gunpowder Gang. And that's how it came out. Wow, that's a good story. Yeah, it's better than just uh, finding a bunch of words and putting them together. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Yeah, you yeah, got yeah. to have a little <laughs> story behind the name or then it's just... Random words. Like yeah, I definitely. Once I, heard, once I heard the story, I loved the name. I was like, oh. oh yeah, it's, it's a good story. It's a good backstory when people ask. And yeah. I want to know, who are all the members in the band? How many do you have? And what are the instruments that are included in this band? Uh, I'm just vocals. Jordan is lead guitar. Then we have another rhythm guitar player, Eric Farnsworth. We have a bass player, Brian Yamas. And our drummer is Cameron Andres. And, okay, cool. And yeah. then we have Dukes. Uh, he comes in sometimes. Yeah, Daniel plays, Dukes. Uh, keyboard. Okay, I got you. And I want to now move to the current event, what you guys are com having coming up. Uh, you guys are very excited for it. I can just yes. tell, yeah. Let's talk about it. Grizzly Fest 2018. Now, can you explain what Grizzly Fest is before we talk about your role in it? So Grizzly Fest is a music festival that gets put on every year. I, I think this is the fifth year they did, that they, maybe? Biggest in Central Valley. It's the biggest yeah. music festival in the Central Valley. And there used to be at uh, Chichancy Park, but now they've moved it to Woodward Park, and now it's two days. Mm. So it's the biggest one that they've done ever. Okay. And then what, what's the story behind how you guys actually came to perform or you're going to be performing at this event? Because I, I read online there's, there's going to be 15,000 people there. Well, that's a huge audience. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. even know. Like, I, I'm get, not yeah. thinking about it a lot. <laughs> uh, I, uh, well, there was this contest, like a fan contest, to mm -hmm. see who, what local acts or what smaller acts they wanted to put on the bill. Mm -hmm. And we did not win. <laughs> And so the we get the phone call. I think the phone like right after the contest uh -huh. like results came out, I got the call from the promoter, and uh, he asked me, "Hey, do you guys want to play on Grizzly Fest?" And I said, "This year?" And he said, "Yeah, like in May." And I was like, "Yeah, like we for sure. Yeah, of course we'll yeah. And so no one was home, and I was like looking around. I wanted to you know, hug somebody or something, and there was nobody around. So I called this guy a whole bunch of times. He didn't pick up. So I told him that day at practice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was very excited. I was disbelief, actually, that we were actually going to So this all in the span of how many days they said you didn't win the contest? To, hey, I don't think we had a We knew that we didn't have a shot with the contest. I don't know. Like, we just did really try. Uh -huh. I thought we had you know what I mean? Like, what, uh, <laughs> other artists were, like, really pushing uh, to win that. And I don't know why we didn't. Uh -huh. And then it ended up being... So, so what, yeah. what was the deal? Like, I feel like there's more to the story than that. They, they heard it, and they're like, man, these guys are really good. Like, oh, I, I know the, the contest. I, uh, the promoter is a good friend of mine, uh -huh. and he happens to really, really like our music and think, our, think that we put on really good live shows. Yeah. So he was like, I want you to play this. Like, not. And I was like, oh, did we win the contest? And he said, absolutely not. <laughs> but I want you guys to play on it. So we were... I'm not going to say no to the biggest music festival in Central that makes sense. California, you know? Yeah, because so. at that point, at this point in time, what is the biggest venue you guys have performed in? It's probably Barrel House in uh, Visalia. And that was uh, one of the first times we actually played on like a very legitimate stage with monitors and lights. We okay. had a sound guy. So you know, it was a sound guy, kind of. But now, I, I mean. We, we played on great days. That's probably the biggest audience. But there's just nobody there. Yeah. yeah. It's like such a weird experience to play live music for people that are already there. there. Okay. You know what I mean? you in a room alone or something? Like, he's, like, <laughs> he's like, by the way, 90,000 people are watching. And then they just like, oh, well, that it doesn't feel like there's a lot of people uh -huh. watching you, even though there is. Yeah. The okay. live there's no live atmosphere, I guess you could say. Uh huh. I got you. So this will be the biggest show we ever play. Yeah. Like volume, like you know what I mean. And are, are you guys nervous for that? Fifteen thousand people. Well, see, I've been not trying to think about it that much. Yeah. You know, it's 
we make music because it's fun for us to play music live. So, so whether you know, it's 10 so, people or 10,000 people. Do so going out there, to me, it's always, you still do the same thing. doesn't matter how many people are there. We're there, there to make the best live music we can. Okay. And that's all I try to think about when I go out there. I don't think about how everyone thinks about the music or how is everyone's judging how we look up there. Mm. I'm just going up there and having the best time I can. Mm. I'm nervous. <laughs> just be honest. I'm nervous about it. at every yeah, show, yeah, cool. but I like the nerves. It makes oh. me want to do a good job, yeah. so I don't mind being nervous. Definitely. And then, how, how's the rehearsal schedule right now? You guys doing every day or every day that we can? Day? Every day that we can. Yeah. I mean, I you know practice guitar every single day yeah. for a couple hours, and then we're practicing. Sing in the shower a lot. <laughs> Makes sense. You know? Yeah, and we practice as much as we can. We're practicing today, tomorrow, mm. you know, and then Thursday we're probably just gonna try to relax a little bit, hang out, yeah. chill out, and then yeah, Friday, three forty. We're playing again. So it's at 3.40 is the time you guys yeah, are playing at. Cool. How long is your set? 30 oh. minutes long. 30. So are you guys performing like uh, some new stuff or is it all the classics that everybody knows? Uh, we're playing something from everything. So we're playing a song off the first EP we ever did. Uh -huh. We're doing songs off our new album. Building Up Credit. Building Up Credit that just got released on the 20th. And then we're playing songs that no one's ever, unless you've seen this live, yeah. You've never heard these songs before. Okay, and let's pretend some people have not heard these songs before. I, I want you to use some key words to describe your music. Like, let's shift towards that. You're All right, right. I would. Uh, I like to call it blues alternative rock, right? So because when people think of if it's just blues music, they think of like old timers just like playing a harmonica. Yeah, yeah. that's not where we are. We're also not just alternative music, and we are rock, obviously. So I like to say blues alternative rock because we're more of a modern style of blues mm -hmm. rock, mm -hmm. a lot more like a. Like the Black Keys, really like the Black Keys, Kings of Leons, Alabama, Rose, Alabama Shakes, you know. So we've kind of tried to combine all that with some more old school sound as well. And uh, yeah, that's how you got Boom Boom Brady. Okay, and is that a style that you guys had developed over time, or was that like from the start? This is the style I want. We want to go. I for think as we've a gotten band. more contemporary. I think we've gotten more modern. Uh -huh. you know, I mean, was, our first albums was a little bit of a bluesier sound. Yeah, so we've definitely are getting a. Uh, our first album, you know, we uh, try to record as quickly as possible, mm -hmm. and uh, so you can hear it. It's uh, production-wise, it's very simple, and the more music we make, I feel like every song we make is more mature. So yeah, the more idea. we play, the more songs you write, the more mature our song sounds. Mm -hmm. And as you can hear from our first album to our second album, and now especially uh, our new music is definitely getting much more professional sounding. And you know that's what we're going for, and all, all growth is good. You know what I mean? Definitely, so yeah. And we don't want to always make the same sound. Yeah, you know, that's boring. We gotta yeah, change, change a little up. bit. Change it up. We're still sticking to our roots, but at the same time, we're trying to spread this way, spread that way, and try to make uh, you know every song a little different, so it doesn't sound like just white noise throughout the whole album. Mm -hmm. Especially like as as from a writing standpoint too, you don't want to write the songs that sound the same all the time. You know what I mean? That's just Definitely, not yeah. it's not fun for us either. You know. And people aren't going to want to listen to the, the album sounds exactly the same as the first the or the second one. or the third. third. So, uh -huh. you know, the, the, from a writing standpoint, it's way more fun to make more complex, modern, newer stuff. So Definitely, I agree. And um, one of the things I want to talk about, too, is the literal sound difference between the first album and the second. I'm not talking about a change in tone. I'm talking about the literal sound sounding a lot better on the second album. Can you explain... Like what the different process you guys went through? Did you yeah, guys so, uh, a different studio? Yeah. What was the deal? So one, we went to a different studio, which definitely helped. And uh, we were able, in the second studio, actually do live recordings in a big room. It's called, they call them big room Yeah, so in the first one, we had to play every instrument by itself. And we just would hear tracks on our like, headphones. It was, Is that standard? It makes right it very... No, it's not. Okay. Yeah, not it's, 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 it's the cheap way to do it. <laughs> okay. So when you're just starting out and you don't know what you're doing, yeah, okay. that's the way you're going to do it. Yeah, okay. And especially also, like I said, in the first album, uh, we try to make music fast. So we, Because when we first started, it was just me and Felix. We didn't even have other musicians yet. Yeah, oh, so really? we okay. had to, you know, we were kind of confined to making a certain type of sound because mm -hmm. I didn't have the uh, flexibility to, you know, make like put a solo here or, you know, have kind of a drum breakdown somewhere else. Because uh -huh. it was just like, all right, guitar, vocals. But now we added a lot more musicians. Uh, like we had another guitar player, uh, keyboard player. You know that helped a lot. It really opened up to a lot more creativity because we weren't confined just to two people. Mm -hmm. And that definitely you can hear that in the second album. That it is more complex in a way. I don't like to make complex music. It's still simple. It's still you just tap your foot to it. Yeah. But there is more going on, which you know makes a fuller sound and uh, more professional, mature sound. 
Yeah, because one of my questions too is like the process that you guys go through to make your music. So it's definitely evolved because you guys are adding more parts to it. How, how, how are you starting out though with each song? Who's, who's writing the lyrics? Who's writing the beat? Like whose job is what? So usually the way it starts is uh, I make something up on the guitar. Oh. And then uh, I'll play it a lot until I think And I'll do this. <laughs> yeah. You'll be playing any practice. I'm like, what is that? Keep like that. <laughs> so then uh, I'll just jam on it for a while and then Felix will start writing <coughs> lyrics over. And then we start jamming with the band, and then I'm like, hey, try this, try that. Uh -huh. And then, you know, some songs will happen like that. Uh -huh. Other songs take a little more effort. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it starts basically a guitar riff, then vocals, and then we add everything else. Mm -hmm. You know, in some songs, yeah, piano sounds great, but some songs they don't. So it really depends, you know? Yeah. It depends on how it starts. And who's getting the final, like, is it everybody's getting a final say? Like, you always come to an agreement, or who actually has the final say in how it's going to sound and where the lyrics are? I mean, it's are? pretty pretty democratic. Okay. I mean, if the song, you know, if we're pretty, we agree on, like, oh, that doesn't sound good. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't agree at first, and then you try it in a different way, you're like, oh, that is better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's pretty democratic. This guy's like the maestro, like. Yeah, so, I mean, if every band, you need someone that kind of directs mm -hmm. practice, especially. Yeah. Because if, if no one does that, it's just, uh, it's chaos, you know, everyone just, every time someone stops, someone starts playing a random thing, the drummer starts doing random things, and you know, you need someone that's, you know, a little bit stern and really structure. keeps people in line and works on structure. Uh -huh. And I've taken that job, which is, you know, not always the most fun thing, because, you know, you try to have a fun time in practice, but, you know, you do have yeah. to have structure, and you it's need to have... It's practice for a reason. Uh -huh. You're practicing. Yeah. So, during, during practice, case. you know, that's my job, to keep everyone in line. But you know, we all contribute, so it's not like a dictatorship by any means. Okay, that's good to hear that you guys are all uh, taking parts and working it all together. And my final question for this segment, uh, what did you guys do the day the album came out, your second album? Were you all together? Or were you just we actually uh, played a show in uh, Paso Robles. Yeah, yeah. we uh, had an Airbnb, we were all hanging out in Paso together, so it was oh. actually pretty cool. Was there a nice celebration after um, it came you out? You know what, we didn't, uh, we were, I think it was at night, and you forget that when it gets released, it gets released at midnight. <laughs> in a, on the in East California. Coast. California. Okay. Yeah. So it can't, got released midnight Eastern on the East Coast. Oh, okay. So people are sending me texts, hey, it sounds good, good job, blah, blah, blah. And you got the notification, um, or the pre order like someone got the pre-order notification that oh. it was ready to, uh, to listen to. And we were like, oh, it's out. Yeah. So it was like the, it was, we didn't get to have a lot of anticipation for that day mm -hmm. because it kind of just, happened you know what i mean I got you. it was yeah. like oh it's out it's like oh okay well i guess we don't have to worry about anything anymore it's hard. it's on the internet forever now so you can't do anything about it so i got you guys well cool yeah i hope you guys can stick around i have a lot more questions i want awesome. to ask you guys we're going to be checking in with ryan who has his new episode of daring adventure coming out i'm very excited to see it i'm sure you guys will be too stick around oh yes i will Welcome back from Daring Adventure. Like I said, I have a lot more questions I want to ask these two, so let's get right to it. And I actually have a copy of your album here. I don't know if you guys knew that, but I had mm -hmm. a copy here. And I want to talk about the album art. What's the deal with it? It looks really unique, really cool. I like the picture. Yeah, so uh, uh, my mom's actually an artist, and she's, she's a great artist. And I actually asked her to paint some kind of uh, picture for our band. And I said it'd be, it'd be cool for something, you know, Fresno, if we could somehow get the skyline in there, because we're really proud to be from Fresno. Mm -hmm. So uh, she came back with that, and it's, I mean, it's beautiful. Uh, she basically just took kind of a picture, added a bunch of paint over it, mm -hmm. add some filters, and I mean, I, I think it looks great, you know? I was super against it. <laughs> oh, really? It's like my wow. mom's going to paint our album cover, and I was like, oh, why would your mom paint our album cover? <laughs> yeah. And then I saw it, and I was like, oh, okay. An MSP. I love that thing. Yeah, 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 I love it. <laughs> no, yeah, it came out really good, and um, I love a lot of the songs in there. I've had a chance to listen to it. There's a really great album. I'm really impressed with the sound Thanks, and how you guys Thank have improved you. Uh, from the sounding of the first album. But there's a few songs I want to talk about specifically, and I just want you to go into a little bit about what they're about. You, you can say as much or as little as you want, but mm -hmm. we'll just talk a little bit about them. Because uh, some of the songs have a lot of emotion to them, I feel like. The first being the song, Please. Mm -hmm. now, can you talk a little, little bit about that song? I'd love to hear some more about it. I mean, that one's a lot less cryptic than people think it is. You know, it's just like, you know, please wait for me. Don't <laughs> yeah. run away. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, don't leave. You know what I mean? Please don't leave. You know uh -huh. what I mean? So it's like, a, you know, it's your standard, it's not that intricate, I like, lyric-wise. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, it's, it's, like, like, it's a simpler one of them. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, and it's, uh, musically, you know, it's uh, one of our more simple, structured ones. You know, it just goes verse, chorus, verse, chorus. But, you know, sometimes that's great because, mm -hmm. It, it, it works, you know, there's no surprises, it just sounds 
very casual and it's it's one of our more uh, to ease your listening uh, chill song. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> And uh, I mean, I love you know the guitar riff. Mm -hmm. I mean, I made it up, so of course I'm gonna like it <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, no, it's a great song, and uh, it's it's definitely it's one of our most uh, played ones right you now know, on iTunes. If you asked us before, like the album came out, that that please would be one of the most popular ones. I don't think I I, oh, I didn't. Really? Okay. You don't yeah. some some songs you think they're gonna be. Yeah. More popular than others, but you, at the end of the day, you have no control over what people are gonna like about sure. it. So please, is like, wasn't really expecting that particular song. I love the song, or else it wouldn't have made it on the album. For sure. Yeah. But I didn't think that people would gravitate towards it so much. I guess. So so far, what's the most popular song would you say in the general public's view? Uh, the wavy song? Oh, it. Okay, that's. It's change. usually it's, wavy. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's you know that's actually really exciting for us because. I actually check uh, iTunes music every day just to see what our top song <laughs> exactly, is, and it's yeah. it's been changing, mm -hmm. you know, which means people are actually listening to it, which is was a surprise to me. You know, I yeah. thought you know our friends would listen to it once and that'd be the end of it, but yeah. looking at it now, it's you know the top song keeps changing, so it means people are you know listening to it daily, which is great. But like, what's really crazy is when people from like a different country, because when you get oh, like yeah. uh, you get the the, uh, the Apple Music reports, and it'll be like Spotify Germany. You know what I mean? Spotify, Finland, and you're like, how do they even figure that? How did like how, how do they even find fit, you? Yeah. Fi like find us? Wow. Okay. So like yeah, that's, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool that people are finding you. The actually... internet, man, it's crazy. <laughs> such a such a valuable tool. Yeah. I mean, before everybody. those CDs that we printed, we just got them a couple weeks ago. There was actually not one physical copy of our music. Yeah. Which is all exist. distributed through the internet. Oh really? Which is okay. you know that's just how modern music is now. Yeah. Just, but it's crazy. Think about it. like you could not physically have a copy of our music until about two weeks ago. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Dang, I didn't even think about that either. <laughs> cool. And the next song I want to talk about, you actually mentioned it, is the Wavy song. What's, what's the meaning behind that one? Because that one does seem like it has one. Too. Uh, yeah. uh, that's a high school sweetheart song. So that's probably one of the ones that I thought about, like, lyrically the most. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember back in grade school. What do you do when you're in elementary school and you like a girl? Mm -hmm. You poke her, you pull her hair, you run away. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I remember back in high school, now all the boys, they buy you roses. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like... You grew up with somebody, you know what I mean? You remember being little kids together and seeing somebody become a super beautiful, successful person, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like one of those songs, you know, don't you love me, baby, like when we were kids, you know yeah. what I mean? So I like that song a lot. I'm glad that song is my favorite one that we recorded, too, because Kyle, our photographer, uh -huh. our bassist, our drummer. Even I. Jordan, even they, were, they all <laughs> did the ooze. And I didn't, and it was just, I loved it. I was just there, they put them all in the, in the big recording studio, gave them all headphones, put them around one microphone, and everyone just went, ooh, and I was just like, yes. That was, like, it's my, my, that was that's really my fun. favorite moment from the recording process. Mm. Okay, cool. Yeah. And then the final song I want to talk about, and like I said, where we can go into it as much or as little as you want, is the song called Brother, which I'm, I'm sure has a ton of meaning behind it. Uh, it's probably, I'm guessing, one of your most popular songs on the first album. It's yeah, I really think it's the most great, popular. It's a really good yeah, so, song, for sure. I mean, I, I, that was uh, the guitar riff that I've been playing for years, you know, and that was the first song we actually wrote as me and Felix. That is the first song we wrote. And, you know, so that one's, once That's I heard that, ago. once we actually wrote that, I was like, all right, this music thing is actually going to work out. Yeah. Because the song is catchy, it's already stuck in my head. And, yeah, no, I, I really like that. It's definitely my favorite song off the first album. Yeah, that, uh, you know... You, you write a song about, like, a lot of people. Like, you get a lot of, like, inspiration from a lot of different stories in your life. Mm. And it kind of gets directed at one person. Yeah. So you're kind of like, I didn't mean that about you. But, but once the song's released, like I said, you have no control over how people perceive it. Mm. You know what I mean? Somebody asked me, uh, something, like, She Burns Hot is about cigarettes. Oh, really? You know what I mean? It's about smoking cigarettes. And, but everyone's like, oh, that's a girl. That's the girl he's got the. <laughs> that's a girl he has the hots for, yeah. and it's like it's not. It's about smoking cigarettes. cigarettes. It's about how I don't want to smoke cigarettes. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's like once it's out there, like it doesn't belong to you anymore. Uh -huh. Like that becomes someone can take whatever they want from the wavy song or Sheeper and Tot. Yeah, it's great you know about I mean? music. I know that's it's it's fun seeing that as the person who made it. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? I never expected that to. Go are down, there any so songs also like like the cigarette um, the song being about cigarettes? Are there any songs that people just got totally wrong? Like in your opinion, I mean that you thought, oh, it's totally about this, and everybody thought it was about something else. Let me see which ones. Yeah. Well, I know. <laughs> we got well, I know Mother Mary. People thought that was a very religious. Yeah, song. that was oh, out of accident. <laughs> yeah, it's not religious. You know what I mean? It's not religious at all. Oh. But it's like, brothers, pray, my like pray. Yeah. I can't save your soul. That sounds really religious too. Yeah. On accident. 
So you, you know don't try to have that religious undertone. No, 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 okay. no, 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 no. But it's, you know, I was raised Catholic, super Catholic kid, mm -hmm. so I'm, I might subconsciously I throw some mean. stuff in there, but that's just because that's part of my vernacular, I guess. I don't know. Okay. But um. I don't know. She burns hot again. It's like not about. Well, I don't write the lyrics, so this is, yeah, this yeah. is a question for you. <laughs> I feel like people haven't told me okay. like that they thought the song was about this or that they thought the song was about that. But I know for sure that there's a lot of songs on both albums that people think it's about a girl or it's about partying or something when, it's, <laughs> when in reality it's not you know okay. what i mean i got you so they just interpret it a special way or yeah they, they see it a different and i try way. not to focus on that because you, that's like one of those things you can't control at all oh for sure once so, it gets out there it's just yeah once it's out there it's just it. what yeah, it is for sure cool and one of the final things i want to talk about it's going to be a little bit of a longer segment um is about influencing in fresno it's one of the themes of the show mm -hmm. so i want to talk about music and how music is influencing fresno and before we get into that let's just talk about who's influencing you guys and i want to start with like mainstream people or mainstream things that are influencing you guys and your music. Yeah, like I said earlier, uh, we a huge fan of Black Keys, Kings of Leon, uh, The Strokes. Uh, is I love a great lift too? Yeah, I like a lot of old ones. school bands, you know, like Led Zeppelin, of course, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Eric Clapton, uh, Jimi Hendrix. John Mayer. John Mayer. Uh, I'm actually a huge Jack Johnson fan. That's actually what got me to start playing guitar. Mm. So I think... What uh, a left turn. <laughs> yeah, you know, but if I'm you, if you, you look, I'm glad you if did. If you look bro. at it... I use a lot of kind of Jack Johnson techniques. Mm -hmm. I just made them a little more bluesier and rock and roll. So I'm basically playing a Jack Johnson kind of style sometimes with a lot mm -hmm. of distortion. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we that's definitely our influences there. Uh, local bands, you know, Strange Vine is really great. Strange, it's, it means so much to me to uh, to be on the same festival as them oh. because I would run into those guys drunk all the time and. <laughs> Just like talk, talk about how I wanted to be in a band. You know, I wanted to be a musician as well. I wanted to be a singer. Yeah. You know, and they're always super polite and nice to me. And now, like, we're playing the same. They don't. They probably don't even know how much they've influenced guys like us. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we're playing the same festival, and that's like, you know what I mean? Like poetic moment. Yeah, you know what I mean? got you. They don't think about it totally. Exactly it right. Yeah, and I hope there. that we can be like that. To yeah. somebody like, oh, tell me the the kids, when we have rehearsal, these neighborhood kids. We'll ride their bikes right outside of the house and just sit there and listen. And we caught them once. Yeah, right? My roommate Snapchatted us with the kid just hanging out in our yeah. driveway listening oh, to so, us. That's so cool. <laughs> so that, yeah, that was really like cool to see. That felt, right when you were doing I was that? Like, oh, man. No, we were, we were upstairs. Oh, upstairs. Yeah, yeah I, I didn't even see it. It was just, you know, <laughs> yeah, it was Snapchat. Snapchat. So we were all like, I was like, what are the kids, what are they doing? And they're like, oh, they're just listening to us. Oh, that's so cool. I was cool. like, what? Yeah. Do you give that kid a signed copy of the album or something? Did, did you, you give him a copy? <laughs> I will now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's your number one fan. You kind of have to. Like I said, Damn. only two weeks old. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how does that make you feel? Because that's actually something I didn't know about. Like, how does that make you feel? That kids or people are just listening to you guys? Like, for example, they're listening to you when you don't even know about it. And it's just like, how does that feel? That's why my favorite compliment to receive about seeing us live or hearing our music, they, they're like, oh, it doesn't suck at all. Yeah, it's like, oh, you guys you know, are actually like, good. Oh, you guys are good at Because, I mean, I don't know. If, if people just have that opinion of their friends or whatever, mm. where they're trying to be an, a For musician sure. or a singer, and they're not very good, mm. and then but you still show support. So to get found out that people like you a lot, and you're not just some garage band, <laughs> and it's like that's a, that's a, that's my favorite compliment. We play above our garage. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you technically, know. <laughs> you're not a garage band. I got you. Cool. And how how have you guys seen the music scene evolve in Fresno since you guys have started playing? You know, it's good. I think a lot of uh, venues are starting to open up more to uh, so original music. I think a couple years ago, when anywhere you go, there would just be cover bands, which is, you know, always fun to listen to, but it's not as exciting as hearing a, you know, a band mm -hmm. that's... Play their play stuff live. Yeah, and it's, you're probably one of the first people to ever hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think because of that, they, uh, these venues are starting to see that those kind of bands are starting to bring in a lot more people. And I think that Grizzly Fest and, like, fashion... Uh, Strange Vine have a lot to do with that too, because it's like now that there's a bigger venue for people to play at, where where big names are going to come too. So now someone who likes Foster the People, they're going to see us play way before Foster the People. Yeah. Then they might like us. <laughs> it just gives you uh, uh, people opportunity to appreciate live music, and that's what we care about a lot. Mm. So, so yeah, it kind of goes along the same thing. How, how do you guys plan to take advantage of the current music scene in Fresno? Just try to play as much live as possible. You know, I always like to think of us more of a, as a live band than a studio band. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that really always annoys me is when I 
hear a, a band on their studio on the recording and it sounds great. And then you see them live and it's kind of a disappointment. Yeah. You know, okay. like I'd much rather... They couldn't complete the songs. Yeah, so I'd much them. rather see a band, uh, hear them on the recording and then see them live and they're better. You know, mm -hmm. that to me is mm -hmm. actual talent. You know, if you have a great producer, great recording engineer, they can make anyone sound pretty good. Another but, but having the internet. actual talent and skill and, you know, maybe even courage to go out there and play mm -hmm. is something I appreciate a lot more than just having the studio sound really good. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really thrive for, and I think that's why uh, we're kind of successful uh, playing live shows in Fresno, because we are a fun, high energetic live band. Mm -hmm. And we get we get told to be quiet or, or <laughs> oh, really okay and we're like oh. every time <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I don't think people are expect us to be like a loud live rock band you know a lot of time when you hear bands are kind of quiet in the background playing background music yeah. and I think sometimes venues expect us to be background music and they realize that we're not very we're, very quickly yeah we're not background music we're definitely like a live uh, performance you know mm -hmm. it's not like just something you throw in the corner. We want to be a show where people come to this venue to see us, not just to, you know, drink right there. I forgot the order of the... Oh, I got you. Yeah, checking everything out. But yeah, um, real quick, too, I want to talk about um, what are your long-term goals for the band? What are your long-term goals to influence the music scene in Fresno? You know, our goal, uh, my goal was always first to uh, play five shows so I could beat my dad. My dad was in a band in the 70s and so played five shows. You would say that all the time. And I was like, all right, got that. Now my n next goal then was to play music festival. Mm -hmm. oh. And then we're doing that. So we're doing that on Friday. So, um... Gotta give yourself, like, goals that you can achieve, because I'll be like, I can't wait till we play Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> and Jordan's like, let's play for more than 200 people before we start talking yeah. about playing yeah, and Jimmy okay. Fallon, you know? So I think our next goal that's, you know, realistic is to uh, really establish maybe just, like, a West Coast tour. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we need... We're still new to this. We've only been really a gigging band for about a year, year and a half. And that's something that takes a lot of planning. And that's something we really need to start doing. Yeah. And that's really our the next The learning one. and the, like, the journey, I guess, is, like, the, it's, like, a really fun part of doing this, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, thinking about how we got better at making music and singing and writing lyrics as we keep going. So, like, that's, like, my goal was always, you know, put a ha have an album. Mm -hmm. Just have an album. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay, now I want two. You know, and now we have two. Yeah. And now just it's like, growing. and then because you, you think that you're gonna run out of things to say, and then you don't, and you just keep going, yeah. and it and it becomes more fun. Yeah. Because you because you have more songs in your repertoire, you get used to it, it becomes more fun. Mm -hmm. Like nothing's fun when you do it the first time because you're not gonna be very good at it. I got you. You know what I mean? So now it's like, you become more comfortable, more fun. You can be like more. You have more like be sillier. Mm -hmm. You know, on stage. That's definitely more fun now playing yeah, live, it's just way more because fun. no nerves. You know? We know what we're doing. You know, mm -hmm. the first time we played, we played live. We were like stressing out. We practiced every day for like a week. Mm -hmm. and we were really nervous when we played. But now, since we do have, you know, somewhat of experience playing live, when we go out there, it's just more about having fun. Obviously, still sounding good, but yeah, it lets us have more fun. I got you. Cool. And then the final question for you guys, and you can both answer separately. Who would you love to open for? Blackies. Yeah, Blackies. Uh. I guess I'll say Strokes then. <laughs> the Black yeah, I really I love, want to see the Strokes. That's I one love of the, the few Black bands Keys I've so seen. much. Like, if we could, like, if they asked us, if, if Dan Arbatch calls us tomorrow, and he's like, "You guys want to open up for me in Oakland?" I'm like, yes. Yeah, always. we made it. I look. Does they, uh, maybe? Yeah, just the Blackies. I think. I think that's the top band. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I got you guys. Cool. And uh, we're running out of time here, so uh, we always have a thing at the end here where we let people promote whatever they have coming up. I think I could guess what you guys want to promote, but go ahead. Whatever you want to say. Oh, yeah. We have Grizzly Fest, definitely. But the week after that, we're actually going to be playing at Fulton 55. Mm. And uh, we're giving away free tickets, or if you want to contribute, whatever you'd like. But uh, just, you know, contact us through our Instagram or Facebook, get our tickets, and then we're playing with four other bands. So it's going to be a really mm -hmm. fun live music event in Fresno. Oh, local and bands. Whiskey Fest. And Whiskey Fest yes. is the week after that. It's going to be, be at uh, The Standard. And then uh, you have to purchase tickets for that through uh, The Standard, but mm -hmm. there's going to be a lot of free uh, whiskey tasting. Yeah. We, there's a big stage. It's going to be Food, a really fun time. tables. Like, yeah. It's outdoors. It's a nice outdoor. It's, it's going to be really fun. So Fulton 55 is May 25th, and then Whiskey Fest is June 2nd. And then uh, there, we're playing a little show on the 18th of May. 
Um, it's called Grizzly Fest. I don't know if anyone's that one, yeah, that one as well. heard of it, but that yeah, one as well. I'm really people. excited about it. Yeah, that's going to be a great show. Yeah, Felix yeah. and Thanks, Jordan, man. I really Thanks appreciate so having much, you guys man. on. And everybody says you're crazy. Because you're the one who changed. And everybody knows it, baby.